Welcome to the Natural Health Show with one of New England's leading natural health care specialists, Mark Mincola. Call Mark at 781-837-4900 on 95.9 WATD. He's waiting to hear from you. Well, welcome home, Natural Health Nation. Always great to have you on board. We're here to uh, make sure that you are in the finest of natural health each and every Sunday night at 8 Eastern Standard. And it's great to have you on board. Also, you can check us out on Ustream uh, this evening and post questions and comments. And uh, Michelle Riley is here, of course, to help out with uh, your, your input. And uh, we've also got a link to uh, uh, Facebook and Twitter as well. So pl- plenty of connection for all of us out there. Hey, you know, uh, there's an awful lot of confusion around the idea of calcium in dairy products. Uh, and unfortunately, it is uh, aligned with an awful lot of osteoporosis issues. America is, of course, suffering 44 million Americans affected by osteoporosis. One in three women and one in five men. And uh, osteoporosis is a major cause of disability uh, amounting to $17 billion in health care costs per year. And uh, while osteoporosis certainly is a very common problem with the elderly, it's also affecting young people in their 20s and 30s and 40s due to something called low peak bone mass. And uh, unfortunately, America is becoming more and more uh, troubled with the problem of low peak bone mass. And uh, it's not just an elderly problem anymore, unfortunately. Again, a lot of folks are very confused about what to do about it. Uh, You've got 700,000 spine fractures per year in the United States, 300,000 hip fractures, uh, 432,000 hospitalizations, 2.5 million office visits, and uh, 180,000 nursing home uh, admissions as well, all related to our bad bones, our aching bones. And we've been told that dairy and calcium are the solution. And... uh, You know, we know also that there's an awful lot of uh, American Dairy Council marketing. So how much of it is is marketing uh, the idea that uh, we have a problem and they have a solution? How much of it is real? You know, the United States has one of the highest uh, bone fracture rates in the world, even though we have the highest dairy and calcium intake. Uh, China, Japan, Bantu, Yugoslavia have one-fifth one-fifth the amount of calcium of intake that the United States has, 250 milligrams of calcium uh, per day on an average, and yet they have also one-fifth the rate of bone fracture. So they have uh, one-fifth our calcium intake and one-fifth the rate of our bone fracture. So make sense of it. It's impossible. The elderly in France, Germany, China, Japan have lower bone density than the United States, but fewer fractures. Some say it's due to their lower dairy and calcium intake. And uh, a meta-analysis, a Yale study that I took a look at this afternoon, usually a a meta-analysis is a study of other studies. So this particular Yale research looked at 34 uh, previously published studies from 16 different countries, concluding that the countries with the highest rate of osteoporosis were also the ones that uh, people consumed the highest amount of dairy products. Of course, we always talk about, uh, we've talked many different times on this program about the, uh, the Harvard Women's Study. 78,000 women followed for 12 years. 78,000 followed for 12 years. And these nurses who were the highest consumers of dairy products had the highest rate of bone fracture. So, I mean, these are just... Uh, these are very contradicting studies to what our general information and our general uh, input is as far as uh, the solution to strengthen our bones. And I, I shudder to think of the number of uh, mothers across America today that uh, urged their children to make sure they drink their glass of milk with dinner or with their breakfast uh, to make sure that they had their yogurt and their cheese. Yet, uh, we have this information that seems, seems to really uh, question whether or not that is the true story or not. And uh, we also know that in conjunction with whether or not it's the true story, the American Dairy Council spends $300 million per year 
marketing its propaganda to convince us that indeed dairy is the solution to our to our ailing bones. So uh, there's a great deal of contradiction, and uh, you know I think that it's really important that that uh, dairy is really looked at from a perspective of nutritional wisdom, and I don't think we're doing that. I think we're just getting brainwashed by a lot of the phenomena, the the uh, got milk phenomena, as I like to call it. And and it has. Uh, we've become a very uh, phen- a culture that's become spellbound with this whole phenomena of dairy and milk. And the got milk myth has become a worldwide hoax, in my opinion. We're led to believe that the 300 milligrams of calcium per cup of milk is necessary for healthy bones. Uh, but again, it doesn't seem to make sense because when you look at these population studies, these epidemiological study after study, I just mentioned the Yale Meta Study of 34 different studies uh, from 16 different countries that clearly pointed out that uh, the countries that have the highest consumption of dairy products have the highest rate of bone fracture. Also, that aligns with the Harvard Nurses Study as well. As I said, 78,000 nurses followed for 12 years. So we're being pitched to uh, quite aggressively. And uh, I'm not so convinced that the solution is what what it appears to be or we've been told that it is. Uh, There are solutions, however. There's a very different way to look at the reality, the natural truth about why our bones are growing weak in spite of the overload of calcium that we're being fed and the overload of dairy products. Uh, And the truth of the matter, I believe, is that we need to understand something called pH or potential hydrogen, the acid and alkalinity of the human body. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about calcium supplements. Recent study that found that uh, the highest consumers of calcium supplements, pills, have an 86% higher risk of suffering a heart attack. Really powerful studies that uh, are very compelling and really sort of stop you in your tracks and make you think twice about the deeper story, about the whole story. That's exactly what we're going to talk about tonight on the Natural Health Show. So we're going to take a little break. Pay a few light bills. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. All righty, welcome back. And as we said earlier, you can uh, check us out on Ustream. The Natural Health Show is on Ustream right now, and uh, you can post your questions and comments. And Michelle Riley uh, is here ever ready to relay them to me, so I'll happily answer your questions regarding anything, whether it's on topic or not. Any natural health questions, we'll take care of those for you. And uh, we're also Ustream linked uh, to Facebook and Twitter as well. So uh, plenty of uh, connection points for us all to uh, get these questions fired up and answered for you. Hey, we're talking tonight on point about uh, what I call the calcium confusion and the dairy deception. And I believe that there's enough, uh, enough confusion out there to, uh, to really sink a battleship. It's pretty wild. But uh, you consider that 44 million Americans are affected by osteoporosis, one in three women, one in five men. And uh, an astounding $17 billion in health care costs every year. And osteoporosis is now uh, becoming more of an issue for folks in their 20s, 30s, and 40s due to low peak bone mass. And, uh, you know, bottom line of it is we're told that the solution is all about milk and calcium capsules. And uh, there appears to be some discrepancies here that, uh, in fact, the calcium issue is not a slam dunk that uh, the American Dairy Council has been spending hundreds of millions of dollars to make sure that we get the answer that that they want us to get, which is, of course, that uh, dairy is where it's at to solutionize the problem. And uh, I'm not so convinced that that's a slam dunk, as I said. We look at a number of different studies right now. Um, The one that I like to point out, again, the Yale Meta Study. uh, And the Yale Meta Study suggests that uh, after looking at 34 previously published studies from 16 different countries. They've concluded that the countries with the highest rate of osteoporosis and bone fractures were indeed the ones which the uh, populations consumed the highest amount of dairy products. And again, that's quite an extensive study. Also, you know, the, we have to look at the fact that in China, Japan, Bantu, Africa, Yugoslavia, they have one-fifth, one-fifth 
the consumption of calcium that we do here in the United States. Only 250 milligrams per day on an average. That's, that's just nothing. That's so little calcium. Yet they have one-fifth the rate of bone fractures. So uh, figure that out. I think that, again, that there's a lot to be talked about here as far as the, uh, the fact that dairy products are extremely high in acidosis. Dairy products are animal proteins, and uh, animal proteins are extremely high in uh, acidity, and they're acidifiers. And acid, of course, is very degenerative. So like all animal-based proteins, milk and dairy products acidify. It has what's referred to as a positive potential renal acid load, or a PRAL. Again, dairy products have a positive potential renal acid load, a PRAL. And again, that suggests that they acidify. Like any animal proteins, uh, they have the acidic chemistry to degenerate uh, those bones and to force you know, the, uh, the, the body into kind of a compensational mode. The other thing I want to tell you, too, is that 30% of the energy of every cell in your body, think about this, 30% of the energy output of every cell in your body is to withdraw calcium. So there's a tremendous tendency for the body to have to kind of figure out how to balance this whole calcium issue out. And uh, pH or potential hydrogen is one of the most significant factors to help our bodies be less confused and to be more focused on how exactly to figure out that calcium problem. So what is pH? Let's talk about that for a minute. Potential hydrogen is a reference for acid versus alkalinity. So there are some foods, some states of existence like stress. Uh, You know, you're late for work, you're in a traffic jam, you're producing a lot more acidity. You're drinking more coffee, more alcoholic beverages. Acidity is produced as the end product. You're eating a lot of fast foods, a lot of fried foods, a lot of sugary products, white flour products, junk foods. Acidity is the end result. Acidification is very degenerative, okay? When you eat more vegetables, more fruits, and uh, more wholesome produce, for example, the end result, and drink plenty of, uh, of pure, pure water, the end result is alkalinity. So as your body is more alkaline, it's more buffered. And uh, you want to think of your bones as having bone banks. Calcium banks are uh, within those bones, and the, the calcium is withdrawn whenever the body is running extremely acidic. So if the body is running very acidy, the body is basically compensating or overcompensating uh, by trying to buffer and alkalize. So it puts the body in a state of incredible stress. So um, we want to make sure that you understand the importance of alkalization. And uh, plenty of pure water is really important. Plenty of vegetables and fruits, extremely important as well. And uh, holding down the extremely high levels of acidity or acidifying animal proteins, sugars, fast foods, uh, and a lot of the, uh, what we call comfort foods, I guess. We call the the starchy, sugary stuff and the desserts comfort foods. That's exactly what they are. They may increase increase serotonin levels, but you're going to lose your your bones with a lot of these acidy foods. Also really important that... uh, we talk about the, the quality of milk these days, the, R, the RBGH, the growth hormone, which drives up the IGF-1, the insulin growth factor 1. So there is growth hormone in a lot of the highly processed dairy products out there right now that has been linked to six different forms of cancer. So the quality of our dairy is nothing like a great-grandmother uh, used to have. I always tell people, too, one of the most important factors here, milk is custom-designed custom designed for the needs of calves, not humans. So, you know, when you think about the, their 100-pound weight at birth, there's a whole different animal that milk was designed for, 100 pounds at birth. They gain eight times their, their body weight by the time they're weaned. So really important to understand that all mammals have their very own milk designed by nature to fulfill their own specific natural needs. People don't think of these things. But, um, you know, I also point to uh, a journal of of epidemiology, I should say, volume 139, number five. It was published in 1994. It was one of the first large case-controlled studies that uh, made it very, very clear that uh, dairy products 
are uh, not easy for the human body to assimilate and not, e- not easy to absorb. We automatically believe that when you drink calcium or when you drink your milk and you're getting your calcium, that uh, that 300 milligrams is 100% absorbable. We've been told through a lot of this research, and again, in the Journal of Epidemiology has done a lot of research on this since 94, a lot of published studies that indicate that only 40% of what we consume is absorbable. Uh, Dr. Amy Lanou has done a lot of work on this as well. She's a nutritional director for the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And uh, she goes on, and this is a quote from from, uh, Dr. Amy Lanou. The countries with the highest rate of osteoporosis are the ones where people drink the most milk and have the most calcium in their diets. Let's go to uh, Mary, pick off a question for Mary. Mary, welcome. How are you? Hi, Mark. Great. How about you? Great. Terrific. Thanks. Uh, Great to hear you this evening. Thank you. As always. And um, I did have a question for you, sort of pertains to tonight's broadcast. And I'm curious if you're, you are still a fan of, of Kangen water, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, Kangen, C-A-N-G-E-N water is an alkaline water. It is uh, definitely a water that has a very high rate of alkalization. And there's an adjustment. It's about a $4,000 machine that actually alkalizes the water. And uh, what, what it does is you can adjust it between uh, their different levels of adjustment. I believe it's between 7 and like a 9.0. So uh, you can go moderately alkaline or you can go extremely alkaline with this water. Uh, so it's kind of you can control the rate of alkalinity with a can water. But, you know, a lot of people talk about, I, I always mention the fact that my favorite type of pure drinking water is distilled water. And then everybody says, well, distilled water is very acidic water. And I say it's negative ion water. So the, the, neg- the, the charges are negative particle charges in distilled water, which means that it creates alkalinity in the body. So, you know, there are some things, uh, like if you take lemon, for example, lemon has kind of an acid base, of course, you know, it's citric acid. Right. But it's negatively charged, which means it creates an alkalization once it hits the body. So it kind of reverses its, its potential. And distilled water is much the same way. That distilled water, because of its acidity, with its negative charge, actually produces an alkalization once it hits the body. So some waters are, are sort of, um, I guess I'd say, sold or pitched or marketed on the basis of their alkalization. But what people are losing track of here is that things, waters like uh, that are very acidic in the case of uh, distilled water actually have a negative charged property that, as I said, creates a, an alkalization once it's in the human body. So I'm actually more of a fan of distilled water. It's what I drink, it's what I use, and it's what I generally recommend. Is there a brand that you... Well, no, I mean, I have, I have a, I have a uh, distiller okay. unit. Oh, it's called right. a Dur- what, The one that I do have is called the Durastil system. The Durastil system is actually a great water system. But, uh, no, I recommend the Durastil system uh, as, a, as a means of uh, distilling your tap water and converting it over to steam. That's really what you're drinking. You're producing steam out of the water that comes out of your tap, and you're storing it. But it, ha- it has zero TDSs. To me, the one, one of the most important components to pure water is having zero total dissolvable solids. So number one, you're drinking distilled water that has zero TDSs. Number two, because of its negative particle charges, it actually is an alkalizing influence on the human body. And that's exactly right. What we're talking about tonight really in, in point of fact is the importance of alkalization and making sure that your chemistry is alkaline. Indeed. Is that, is it, really costly um like the 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 kangen is it can you get something on the order of that but at not such great a cost well the the last that i heard i heard uh, several weeks back that there's a company i believe in nashville or something like that nearby here i say nearby because the kangen waters of course imported the systems are imported from japan right which has a great deal to do with the cost. Mm-hmm. And I think that there's a company that's, um, that's done some legal battle with the, uh, the Kangen people about uh, having the, the liberty to market their product, which is a very similar product from what I understand. And uh, it's being manufactured in this country. 
for a significantly lower price. Now, I can't tell you much more than that. Or the name. You or, don't. or the name. I, I would tell you if I knew it. The gentleman that, that represents Kangan, is, is he, I don't suppose, a representative for the, the company in Nashville as well? No, no, I think that I think that's okay. there's a conflict of interest there. I, I believe that the Kangan people are they're they're based in like I said in Japan, right, right. and there's another company trying to uh, kind of undermine the price uh, by manufacturing a similar product here in the United States. And from what I heard, that uh, they had a claim that their product was different enough to merit marketing, uh, but I don't know what the, what the final outcome of that is. Okay. Would you still encourage folks to, to contact that, that same gentleman who was marketing the Kangen just a few years back? I mean, sure. I mean, it, it, you know, I think what you need to do is this. You need to study the issue of water. I mean, you know, you're, you're interested in having a water that has an alkalizing influence on your body uh, because you're looking to buffer those body acids, which is an extremely important thing because our stress and our diet, of course, is really what's eating our bones. And uh, so you're concerned uh, with good reason to, uh, to make sure that you and your family are being alkalized with what you drink. But I think you need to study it and, and really take a good look at it. I, I think you need to uh, make sure that you're getting the water that you want. I would certainly recommend that you drink uh, an alkaline water. I, I, like I said a minute ago, there's a lot of ways to, uh, to get that done. You can actually drink an acid water that has negative charges as does distilled and produce the same results. But right, right. if you wanted to use the uh, Kangen and could find a price point that works for you, I'd say fine. I know you've tested Poland Springs in the past. Yeah, and Poland Springs only has 20, total, uh, 20 to 40 TDSs or total do- dissolvable solids. I think any... Any pure water that has less than 50 TDSs is worth looking at. Okay, and, and you're still fairly happy with them yep. as a water company. Do you have time for one more quick sure, go question, ahead. which is uh, totally different? But yep. um, Are you familiar with B12 injections for things like, like trigger finger? Sure. In, instead of doing like, a, um, you know, just going to mainstream... Well, first of all, it's got to be methyl-based B12. There's cyanocobalaminic acid, which okay. is the more common form of B12 that's really not going to touch the nervous system. So right. if you want a B12 that's supportive of the nervous system, you talk about things like trigger finger, anything that has a neurologically uh, a neurological base to it, you certainly want to use a methyl form of B12. Um, and the injections are certainly a direct way to make a, a connection with, with your biochemistry without question. But... There's some really good methyl B12s right now. I know Jara Formulas makes a real good 5,000 mcg methyl B12. It's very, very absorbable, and I highly recommend it. I take the 1,000. Do you think I should up it to 5 and see what happens? Sure, it's not going to hurt you. Give that a try for a while and see if you get better results. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And, but if that doesn't help, then I could contact, um, I have a couple names, you know the folks, but that who do the actual B12 injections. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and many of the physicians out there who are, who are uh, in the uh, marketplace will also instruct patients as to how to do their own injections or their nurse practitioners will do so. Interesting. Very good. Is that got a pretty good success rate longer than maybe the three months you might get from the, you know, so cortisone or whatever else? Yes. It can work more yes. permanently. Yeah. Yes, but you really, it's going to take a while. In many cases, uh, a lot of folks with herpetic viruses and a lot of neurological inflammation like that uh, have noted great results, a lot of great studies regarding that. Uh, but it takes quite a while. It takes uh, anywhere from four to six months to really make a lasting difference. And multiple injections then? Yes, yes indeed. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Mark. Pleasure. Have a great night, Mary. You do the same. Thank you. Thank you you so much. Hey, we're going to take a short little break, and we'll be right back. Stay right where you are. All righty, welcome back. And uh, we're talking with you tonight about calcium confusion and dairy deception. And uh, again, you know, we're talking about 700,000 spinal fractures per year, uh, 300,000 hip fractures per year. 432,000, 432, that's an incredible amount of hospital admissions and 2.5 million office visits, 180,000 nursing home uh, admissions. So it's remarkable the number of folks that are dealing with, with uh, porous, weak, fragile bones. And, uh, you know, that can happen at any age. And unfortunately, the amount of, 
uh, acidic food that we're consuming and stress that we're contending with would uh, certainly validate the fact that uh, America is becoming extremely bone weakened. And uh, unfortunately, it's not getting any better. But the, uh, the real confusion part here is about the, the solution because we've been, you know, the way America works is it feels like, you know, it's a problem solution uh, spin that we get every, every day of our lives here in this country. And I think that the, uh, the Dairy Council has really kind of spun this fact that, um, you know, that because there's a very serious problem, we've got to get those kids a glass of milk every day. And again, this is not a slam dunk. I keep, uh, I keep reiterating that. But uh, again, the Yale Meta Study, 34 published studies from 16 different countries, concluding this is the Yale study, including that the countries with the highest rate of osteoporosis were those where the people consume the most dairy products. Why? Because again, dairy is an acid-based, an acidifying animal protein. That's really an important point, that it's an acid-based protein. It's an animal protein, no different than meat uh, or any other uh, eggs or any other protein that's uh, from animals. And you want to understand that we produce osteoclasts and osteoblasts. And osteoclasts increase bone breakdown, osteoblasts increase bone density, uh, not necessarily bone strength. You know, and a lot of the solutions also the, that so many folks are aware of, Fosamax and Boniva, those basically, and the uh, Zumit, Zumita and the Avista, Actinel, a lot of those medications basically kill off the osteoclast cells. They'll thicken bones with less strength, and uh, certainly they, they produce a lot of side effects, blurred vision, uh, swelling eyes. Uh, they also produce um, osteonecrosis of the jaw. There are a lot of legal suits regarding osteonecrosis with uh, Fosamax. Also a lot of liver damage, renal failure, AFib. So there's, uh, there's, there are no party, these medications. So again, once again, Americans are getting a pretty heavy dose of bone problems with a very light dose of good solutions. And uh, everybody's on the bandwagon trying to solutionize. You know, we're trying to sell you milk and cheese uh, that have a big question mark attached to them. We're trying to sell you Fosamax, which uh, could be indeed causing you osteonecrosis of the jaw, liver damage, renal failure, AFib. Uh, blurred vision, and et cetera, et cetera. And again, I think the other part of that is you want to think about, when you think about bone density, you want to think about the bone matrix. The bone matrix, really important. In other words, picture in your mind a hockey puck and some coral, some coral from the sea. They're both very dense. They're both very hard. But if you took a hammer and you banged at that coral, as hard and as dense as that sea coral is, you're going to chip it, you're going to break it with that hammer. You bang that hockey puck with a hammer and forget about it. You can't touch that thing. You can't chip it. You can't break it because it has a matrix. It has a, it has a matrix of uh, hard rubber that's wrapped around it. And when you think about things like, um, like menaquinone, MK7, vitamin MK7, it's called menaquinone which is actually one of the important solutions. Um, 100 micrograms of MK7, M as in Mark, K as in Kevin, number 7, MK7, has uh, been shown in study after study to actually support the bone matrix. Okay, not just harden the outer shell of the bone, but to strengthen the inner matrix of the bone so that when somebody takes a fall, they have enough to withstand the pressure of that fall. You're, you're creating a bone that has greater density throughout its matrix as opposed to a, a medicine like Fosamax that just really sort of thickens the outer part of the bone and leaves it more like coral, which can break and can chip. That's a pretty important point. So um, the other thing we want to say here, too, is, is that vitamin D has been talked about a great deal, of course. And, um, you know, we talk about folks really not consuming enough nutritious food that is alkaline, not enough... Uh, exercise, not enough vitamin D, too much tobacco, alcohol, again, medication. You know, these are the issues that I think really create this, this acidification of the human body. And again, the more acid your body is from the more poor diet, sediment, and sedentary lifestyle, uh, alcohol use, coffee use, etc. When you think about the pH of coffee, by the way, coffee has a, a potential hydrogen of about 2.0. 
1.5 to 2.0, you're looking to stabilize a urinary tract at about 6.4 to 6.8. So you really want to be more alkaline with your diet to keep your body buffered and to keep your bones protected and buffered. So that's um, an extremely important issue. And uh, the other part of that question, too, that I think is really uh, worth sharing here is the type of calciums. There's a number of calciums out there. About three years ago, we had uh, Jordan Rubin from Garden of Life, the CEO from Garden of Life on the show. He actually came on twice in one year. And he guaranteed to our listening audience that uh, he talked about his product, which is the Grow Bone system that has the uh, MK7 in there. And his guarantee was, and he did a guarantee to our listening audience uh, tw- on two different occasions. If folks get a bone, bone density scan and they take six months worth of the product and then get a follow-up bone density scan and save their receipts from both bone density scans and from six months worth of product usage, save all the receipts. And if they can prove from those scans that they didn't grow a bone, he told them that they would pay for those, uh, those two bone scans and for the six months of product. And I've put about 300 of my patients through that program, and they've all exhibited the ability to grow bone. So uh, I do recommend the Garden of Life product called Grow Bones, the Grow Bone System. It's a remarkable system, and uh, it really does work. Hey, we're up against uh, a little bit of time here. We have... Uh, a guest coming on, Dr. Karen Weber, who has traveled five con- uh, continents for over the past 12 years with uh, an interest in community and an interest in how community interacts with the environment. She's done some remarkable, remarkable work. She is the founder of the Boston Green Fest. And uh, the, uh, there's going to be over 200 different exhibitors, 200 live performances. And uh, that's going to be August 16th through 18th, and that is the Boston Green Fest for folks who are uh, not doing anything on the 16th and 18th of August. That should be a tremendous take. So I welcome Dr. Karen Weber to the Natural Health Show. Karen, welcome. Thank you very much. And tell us us a little bit about uh, what is the Boston Green Fest and what is the aim of the Boston Green Fest? Well, Boston Green Fest has become the largest multicultural environmental festival in the region. It aims to bring the whole community together. All our neighborhoods, our corporations, our small and large businesses, our nonprofits, government agencies, academic institutions, our schools, pretty much all sectors of our, of our society Great. to come and share knowledge, learn from each other, get stronger from our diversity, learn about how we have different approaches, and really think about ways to start making a difference in terms of living a sustainable life. Well, and you are a leader in the world of uh, sustainability and uh, the green movement. It, it, are things getting better? I don't know. Let's think about it. It's pretty hot right now. Yep. And we have not heard anyone from the television saying, don't run and start, you know, turning on your AC on the highest level. Keep it at a medium level. And if you can, keep your shades down and go buy fans. We need to conserve. The, The more we use our AC, the more we're using carbon, the more we're heating up the atmosphere, the more we're going to need the AC, the more we're going to spend. So these are some of the things that, Instead of hearing about those um, prescriptive solutions and remedies, we're just happy to let people buy and spend and keep the cycle going. So, in fact, I think it's fair to say that we're not doing what we can be doing. Sounds that way. But it sounds like uh, if folks show up on the 16th, 17th, or 18th at the Boston Green Fest, uh, they'll be able to learn something from the Green, Green Film Fest, yes? Oh, the Green Film Fest, absolutely, and they'll be able to learn from all the different exhibit, excuse me, interactive exhibits that we'll have at Boston Green Fest, which, in fact, just to mention, MIT Fab Lab is going to be there, oh, which great. is a really special um, addition to our event absolutely. because people are able to actually fabricate um, various solutions right on site. The, the Fab Lab is in, I think, 135 countries around the world, and 
we're going to be very lucky to have it at our event for um, for that short time. But in fact, um, the Green Film Fest is a, a wonderful opportunity to learn about the foods we eat, how we might start thinking about different decisions uh, that affect the way we shop and um, our menus that we plan. Um, we also are going to be showing a movie, Gasland, which we'll be talking about fracking and the negative effects that that has had on many parts of our country and our communities. Um, there are two movies that are very exciting ones. They're not such mainstream movies. Uh, they're part of a, the Katsi trilogy, which is from a Hopi word. And what, the first of the trilogy is called Koya Niskatsi. Mm -hmm. It is a movie that talks about life out of balance. And it juxtaposes our urban life in New York City with the natural life that one finds in the wilds of New Mexico. Um, and there is no narration. That's a remarkable contrast in yeah, lifestyles right so, there. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> what it does is it allows people to look at these images and hear yeah. music that connect. And it's, it draws them through, tells a story just through the imagery of the movie, which is very powerful. And the second movie is Pawakatsi, which talks about the important, you know, here we talk all about preservation of our species and the animal species that we've been losing, but we're not talking so much about all the cultural diversity that we're giving up on a daily basis. So this one looks at the importance of all the different cultures around the world and how um, in different parts of the world people, um, uh, people approach their daily lives in very different ways, and there's a lot to learn from that. Sounds really, really great. And also you're introducing uh, the uh, Movement Festival this year for the mm -hmm. first time, is that right? I actually, I should mention, just to be fair to our sponsors, is that this year the Green Film Fest will be held at Suffolk University, so it's a first step away from our, our actual site of our event, and Chipotle is going to be providing some healthy snacks and even dinner at, and so there'll be burritos and things like that. <laughs> so, and the, um, it, it, it should be quite a nice place. The, um, alkalizing food to keep your bones safe. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and, and keep you awake to watch the rest of the movie. <laughs> That's great. So the movement, <laughs> the movement festival, festival yeah. is another, um, very exciting component of our event. And, uh, we are partnering with Sean Fielder of the Boston tap company and Lino Delgado of the floor Lords. They are um, top-notch performers, international performers, and they have taken on a, a new festival, the Movement Festival, which mainly um, focuses on dance, but also movement. And for Boston Green Fest and our mission of being healthy, being fit, if everyone were fit and eating to just what their need was and not beyond, mm -hmm. if everyone were exercising and keeping their body in good shape, we would reduce our, the burden that we put on our land and our resources, I don't know by how many fold. I'm sure. And you know, uh, from, a, from a personal health perspective, of all the different crossover studies that have been done on nutrition, the single most important factor that supports longevity is calorie restriction. Mm -hmm. So Americans really need to get that message for themselves and for the planet that they share that uh, it's a win-win to just cut down on those calories. Right, and, and basically, to, I think what happens is we don't, have enough, um, we don't have enough ideas of what we should be doing with ourselves. So we sit in front of the TV or the computer. But in fact, if we got ourselves out to festivals and to go dancing and to have parties and to you know, go and move and be outdoors and do things, we wouldn't necessarily be looking for all those added calories. We, and when we did sit down to eat, it was because we've, we deserve it. We merited those calories at that point. Yeah, it's called burning the calories and not storing them. <laughs> right, exactly. So the Movement Festival is bringing free movement and dance classes to the community. Anyone would be um, allowed to join in, whether they're in a wheelchair or whether they're blind or whether they're... It doesn't matter if you have a handicap or not, if you're the best dancer or you've never done it in your life. They're offering free opportunities to take advantage of some classes to, um, you know, try moving, uh, moving your body in different mm -hmm. ways. And at the same time, there'll be a full performance stage 
and uh, we will have food and, and good says, food, good healthy food, and an eco bazaar to be. But the full, full extent of the festival will be felt on the Friday and Saturday with over 200 exhibits and Disney stars coming in from Burbank, a huge eco kids section, robots. In fact, there's a very exciting robot that's coming to Boston Green Fest. I actually saw it at the Shanghai Expo, the World Expo, and it's coming to our event. So people should uh, keep their eyes open and, and plan to take a look at this because we're moving into a world where um, robots and you know, mechanizing some of our systems, creating things that are more efficient is going to be part of our world. Absolutely. And the more we learn about it and get a feel for it, the more we'll be able to um, work with that and, and move to the next level that we need to be So at. is there a website or some kind of yeah. uh, location that you can direct listeners to and uh, maybe they can check things out as far as the, the Boston Green Fest? Absolutely. It's um, www.bostongreenfest.org. And if great. they forget, they can pretty much put Boston Green Boston Festival, I think it will come up in, in any of the search engines pretty quickly. Well, Dr. Karen Weber, we certainly thank you for being on board, and we, we wish you a wonderful, wonderful Boston Green Fest, and congratulations on some remarkable work. Thank you. And just aside, we have five stages of live multicultural entertainment spanning five continents, and we've got extraordinary performers coming on board. The website is in the process of getting fully updated in the next day or two. All the schedules should be up. But please, it's, it's just a, an amazing opportunity to, to join in and see a whole scope of art and foods and culture and cars and you name it, it's there. Give that website again. www.bostongreenfest.org. Karen, thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right, bye-bye. Let's uh, go to a quick little break, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. All right, we've got a couple questions here that uh, came across uh, our airwaves. And uh, first of all, this is for the, the new Demise user via Ustream. And the question was uh, how arthritis, of course, plays a significant role. Uh, I should say diet plays a significant role in arthritis. What type of supplement would I say to recommend with, with your diet? I say that uh, two things might uh, be helpful uh, for that condition. Zyflamen, Z-Y-F. L-A-M-E-N-D, Zyflamen, a company called New Chapter. New Chapter makes Zyflamen, which is a natural anti-inflammatory, which is uh, an extremely, extremely effective uh, uh, natural medicine. And I recommend it in gel caps. It's a little less expensive, a little, a little less pricey. Uh, the gel caps, I believe they make 180 gel caps. I would say you want to take six a day if you really, really have inflammatory arthritis, four a day if you have moderate um, with that, I, always, I also like there's a German product called Wobenzyme, W-O-B-E-N-Z-Y-M-E. And Wobenzyme also I would take three a day. And uh, uh, these, these are two superb natural anti-inflammatory. Uh, they're COX-2 inhibitors, and uh, they lower the uh, arachidonic acid levels in the body. But you're right, you know, diet's an important part of it. If you think about where inflammation comes from, inflammation comes from... Uh, a lot of uh, inflammatory foods that produce a fatty acid called arachidonic acid. So too much red meat, too much dairy, like we've been saying. Egg yolks, not so much the whites. And peanuts, those are the things you've got to be careful of. Also from Kevin Smith via Facebook, talking about psoriasis uh, related, being related to food allergies. If so, and you stopped eating the allergenic foods, he asks, how long would it take to see results for skin healing? Um, psoriasis is a metabolic condition, and the skin is the seventh major eliminative organ, of course. So it's really, really difficult to make sure that uh, you're patient uh, with the res results and the response. You can withdraw from the wheat or the dairy, for example. You're still going to have to probably go for a good six to eight weeks before you start to see results. It takes time. Some of these conditions clear really, really fast. I would say the arthritis actually would clear them a lot quicker. Uh, but unfortunately, psoriasis being a metabolic condition, it takes a lot more time. There's a lot more detoxification that has to take place for, for you to notice those effects. So I'd say give it, give it a good six to eight weeks. Okay, and that's for Kevin Smith. Again, anybody has questions uh, when we're on the uh, Natural Health Show each and every Sunday night, uh, you can feel free to contact us. Uh, we are basically a Ustream bound these days. So you can post your questions on Ustream. And again, we're linked also to uh, Facebook and Twitter. So... 
feel free to ask whatever questions you wish, and I'll make sure that I answer them for you all, or you can just call in if you wish. And uh, we've been talking about uh, the, the calcium confusion and the dairy deception this evening. And again, there's an awful lot of people that are basically uh, confused about what to do. We want to make sure that you understand that not all calciums are created equal. There have been studies, as we pointed out earlier, that indicate that uh, there's up to an 86% increased. Uh, this is actually, um, I'll, let me go over the study here. The FDA, of course, recommends daily intake ages 14 through 18, 1,300 milligrams of calcium. Ages 19 to 50, 1,000 milligrams. Ages 51 and higher, 1,200 milligrams. And that's recommended by the FDA yet. Some calcium supplements put you at risk for heart attack, according to a study that was published in the uh, medical journal Heart. 24,000 subjects ages 35 to 64 were followed for 11 years. And those who took calcium supplements daily were 86% more likely to have a heart attack than those who didn't take the supplements. Again, keep in mind only 30% of the calcium in food is absorbed. That's based on an MIT study. And Americans get 72% of their calcium from dairy products. Again, only about 30% absorbable. So there's a lot of, uh, lot of, like we said, a lot of confusion about calcium and about dairy products. <clears throat> Excuse me. And my contention is you want to make sure you alkalize yourself. And if you want a one-stop shopping system, <clears throat> excuse me again, Garden of Life is a company that I recommend. They have a grow bone system that I think is an exceptional, exceptional system. The only calcium that I ever recommend is calcium 3 and T-H-R-E-O-N-A-T-E, and that's actually referred to as BioCalth, B-I-O-C-A-L-T-H, BioCalth. And they make a bone and joint formula. Two capsules of the BioCalth equal 1,550 milligrams, and that's what my recommendation would be. So again, the three things that I, that I want you to kind of do your research on, I talked earlier about menaquinone, MK7, M as in Mark, K as in Kevin, the number seven, MK7, uh, 100 micrograms twice a day on an empty stomach. And menaquinone or MK7 is a significant uh, difference maker when it comes to preserving your bones. It plays traffic cop with calcium. If there's calcium in your body, MK7 makes sure it goes right to those bones doesn't deposit anywhere like arteries, doesn't store in the places it doesn't belong, no deposits, direct absorption. So MK7 is an important traffic cop you want in a blood level to make sure your calcium is efficiently absorbed and not depositing anywhere. Number two, I talked about Jordan Rubin's Garden of Life Grow Bone System. Pretty easy to remember, Grow Bone System. Research it, check it out. It's an amazing product. As I've told you, i put over 300 people through that, and they have definitely grown bone over the years. Also, the calcium, if you want a straight-up calcium, I like something called BioCalth, B-I-O-C-A-L-T-H. BioCalth is as efficient a calcium as there is anywhere in the marketplace. It's a form of calcium called 3 and 8. It's an amino acid-bonded, pre-digested calcium. It doesn't require virtually any digestion at all. They make a new bone and joint formula, and they even make chewable versions now to make it a little bit easier for kids or for adults. So uh, those are my recommendations in terms of uh, the calcium issue. But keep in mind, the diet is the beginning point. More vegetables, more fruits. Your green leafy vegetables are loaded with uh, calcium, of course. Again, keep in mind that there are nations like China, Japan, Bantu, Yugoslavia that have one-fifth the, the consumption of calcium that we do, and yet they have one-fifth the rate of bone fractures and uh, remember that Harvard nurses study? Again, check that out. A 12-year study, 78,000 nurses were followed. Those who consume the highest amount of dairy products have the highest rate of bone fractures. Calcium is really something you've got to be really cautious and smart about. Calcium confusion and dairy deception are unfortunately rampant. Don't go down easy these days, guys. Hey, until, wow, this time goes by quickly. This is, uh, first of all, i got to thank Tim McKenney for doing a great job as our producer and Michelle Riley for being an extraordinary support here as an intern. I'd like to thank Ed Perry, of course, for doing a great job keeping the boat floating here. And, uh, and until next Sunday, if you want to check out our website, it's maxhealing.com. Max Healing is one word. And again, until next Sunday, this is Mark Mincola reminding you all, please, be wise, be aware, be well, make it a healthy week. 
Good night.